Now, one of YouTube's most anticipated new features, for creators at least, is YouTube's thumbnail test and compare feature. You might know it as ABC thumbnail testing. Uh, we call it a bunch of things, but it is already starting to roll out to just about every creator on the platform. We're gonna dive into who's getting it, what it's all about, and when you can expect to see it on your creator studio. Let's dive in. This is the most anticipated feature in quite a while, most requested. People, even in my comment section, other comment sections of other videos are saying, where is my test and compare? Where is AB thumbnail testing? And they said a few months back, our goal is to launch the feature to all creators by this summer. Well, guess what? It's summer and they're rolling it out real early in summer, in fact, so that's pretty good. So yes, YouTube's thumbnail test and compare. This is the blog post that you're looking at right now that came out exactly uh, six days from when I'm recording this. So it did come out nearly a week ago, but the, as the title says, thumbnail test and compare, rolling out for all creators in the coming weeks. So already in this first week or six days that we've had, and plenty of people got it, I've got it. So we're gonna dive in. I think the first thing we need to discuss is eligibility. Who is eligible to get the test and compare feature? Number one, you need to be a creator. Number two, you need to have advanced features enabled, which should be pretty standard if you've had a YouTube channel for any length of time. You should be there already. And that being the case, if you don't have it already, you'll have it very soon. Now I'm gonna dive in and show you just how you can check to see if you've got it in just a second. Now, the other eligibility requirements is you need to not be a made for kids channel, so a non kids channel. So just making regular YouTube videos, not making videos specifically for children. And that of course is at a video level. So how do you check that you've got it? Well, what you can do is go into your YouTube studio on desktop, go into your content tab. And then when you're there, just find a recent video, uh, a VOD, and just click on the details on the little pencil icon. And what you want to do is scroll down to where it says thumbnail. Now, when you look at that on at a cursory level, just like glancing, you go, okay, I don't see any options there. But what you need to do is go over, click on these three dots options, and you'll see test and compare right there. Once you have that, you'll be able to dive in and do some testing. But before that, let's look at the main points We've talked about some basic eligibility in regards to advanced features. If you wanna know more about how to check if you've got advanced features, there's a whole other video that I did talking about feature eligibility uh, quite a while ago that is still very relevant and that also shows you how to get there. So if you wanna check that out, you can click up here on the card. It'll also be listed in the description. So maybe by the time that you see this video, they've rolled it out to everyone and you've probably already got it. So. Now that you have it, what's it all about? How does it work? Let's dive in. At the notes that they give us, first of all say, what is thumbnail test and compare and how does it work? Thumbnail test and compare is a feature that lets you upload up to three video thumbnails to test with viewers to help pick your winner. Some people call this A-B testing, but test and compare takes it even further with up to three thumbnail options. So you can upload up to three thumbnails to a single video for testing against each other. Here's how test and compare works. YouTube will show your chosen thumbnails evenly across your video viewers. And then we'll select a winning thumbnail based on which one generates the most watch time share. We'll get into that a little bit more shortly. Note, it may take a few days or up to two weeks to get finalized test results from your thumbnails. Often, even after two weeks of testing, you may still not get a winner test result. The amount of time it takes to get test results is affected by a variety of factors, including the amount of impressions your video gets and how different your thumbnails are. If a test is in progress, you'll see a running status. Now, once it's run a test, what sort of results are you gonna see? Let's check it. Uh, once the test is complete, you'll see a report with your results. You'll see a winner label 
if a thumbnail clearly outperformed other thumbnails based on watch time share, and we're sure that these results are statistically significant based on data from viewers. YouTube will still automatically update your video thumbnail to this winner when the test is done. So that in one scenario, there's a definite winner, it'll mark it as a winner and automatically make that your default thumbnail. You might also see a preferred label, which means the thumbnail likely outperformed other thumbnails based on watch time share but we're less sure that viewers prefer this thumbnail compared to the one that got the winner result. So if there's not enough statistical data to convincingly say that one is a clear winner, they might mark one as preferred based on some other factors and what they've already uh, gathered in regards to data on that particular test. If there's no clear winner, the first thumbnail will be selected and shown to your audience. Now here's the important thing to remember that regardless of test results, choosing a thumbnail is up to you. You can always manually select the video thumbnail you want to use, even if it wasn't the winning or preferred option. So once the test is over, you can choose any of the three thumbnails or even upload another completely different one if you want to do, or another completely uh, complete new set of tests. Now, when we talk about eligibility before, we talked about having advanced features. Now, the other thing to keep in mind, it is only available on YouTube Studio on desktop. It is not an option in the mobile version of the YouTube app or the YouTube Studio app. Now, you can only test thumbnails on public long form videos. So a video that is public, long form, so it's available to people, ready to go. Uh, you can also apply to live stream archives that are saved as videos. We might have to look into the definition of what that means, but you, basically you cannot set a live stream that's scheduled for the future to have multiple thumbnails. You can only do it on the VOD or the replay once it, the stream is over. And you can also apply it to podcast episodes. And you can also, you can't test thumbnails on videos that are set for made for kids, videos made for mature audiences, or on private videos. So a video is marked private, you won't have the option to uh, start a test. Let's look at some FAQ uh, tips. And then what we're gonna do is go into a demonstration of how we're going to add these thumbnails to the video and run a test. We'll show you how to do it real time in just a second. So quickly, some tips from YouTube themselves. Now, the first thing they say is the lack of actually having a, a winner result is normal. So if you if you start running these things and tend not to get a winner result, you might only get a preferred result or a no result. That is just because you may not have enough data to actually have that conclusive result that we talked about. The Another tip they say is to make sure that the three different thumbnails that you upload are significantly different. So don't just test minor changes, test a completely different style of thumbnail. So you might have a thumbnail with your face, a thumbnail without your face, and then something else as the third one. But there's no, you're not just testing variations of color or uh, uh, maybe changing some text here or there. Let's uh, go with a completely different one. So we're seeing that there's definite contrast between each thumbnail. Remember that they're optimizing for watch time share, not CTR. Now the reason why they don't optimize for CTR is because if you rely too much on CTR or going for the highest CTR, you could start leveraging something like clickbait. And if clickbait happens in the extreme where people are clicking on the thumbnail because the thumbnail is saying, click me, click me, click me, they get into the video, the video does not deliver on the promise and they click away early. That lack of watch time is the indication of clickbait. It's, it's a, that, that the video doesn't satisfy the viewer uh, in, com in comparison to the amount of times that people are clicking. So if that's the case, that's a problem. So that's why they work on watch time share rather than purely click through rate because we don't want YouTube to become a big massive place that's full of clickbait. We want it to be click worthy. Now they say that you can test brand new videos, newly uploaded, those tests in the first two weeks typically will uh, leverage the response from your 
core audience and subscribers. Whereas if you test a video that might be three months old or six months old, you're testing more general audiences that might be finding the video in browse and recommended, suggested, search, so and so on. So just be strategic when you're choosing when to run your test and compare whether it's on a newly released video or an older video, and know that you're testing for different things at different times. And the other thing to know is that if you're testing something that is a little bit older, that you may not get a statistical result because you may not be getting enough impressions in that two week period of when it tests your uh, uh, thumbnails in that period. But if you've got a video that keeps bringing in views, an evergreen video, that might be the idea of video to be testing on. And they also suggest that you run uh, several tests at a time. So like in other words, a test on multiple videos on your catalog at the same time to uh, get an idea of what might be working for you uh, generally as thumbnails across your channel. You might start seeing patterns along the way in that certain period of time. So be looking at the results carefully and understand uh, what it is telling you. It's a time to show you how to do a test and compare. So let's jump on over to the computer and take a look. What you can see here, we're back at that spot where we're gonna run a test and compare. So I'm gonna click on that right now. You can see I've already got one thumbnail. I need to add two more thumbnails. Okay, so now I've got my three thumbnails already uploaded. And now all I have to do is click done. The test is ready and we'll start once you save changes. So all I have to do now is click save and the test will start running automatically. I don't need to tell it to do anything else other than to give it the three thumbnails that it needs to do the test. And click save. Now the test is running. Now, when it's testing three thumbnails, you're gonna see the thumbnail look like this. And it says the word test on it says the test is running. So you can see those features there. The three dot menu right now is gonna give you a view test report, upload file, auto generated. We're not gonna click on the test report because we're gonna actually have it running. If the test finishes, you'll see a, a note here as well. In this section here right now, it's running. You won't see much there. You can see it's running because of the three, three split thumbnails there to show, indicate the fact that it's showing three different thumbnails at the same time. We're gonna to have to dive back in at a few, in a future video to look at the results part of this, because right now this is the very first one that I've run uh, as only having received this feature in the last week. We're gonna come back and look at this in a different uh, video as to how to look at, it, look at uh, results in a, a test and compare and what was our experience, what was my experience with the amount of pressions I get on a particular video. So I will be running this regularly on brand new videos as I upload them. Even this video you're watching right now will have an, a, a test and compare running on it from the get-go. Now I'm interested in your questions about test and compare. Is there something that is in the back of your mind as to maybe the results or maybe what types of thumbnails should I be uploading or anything like that? Let me know, ask those questions in the comments below. I will gladly meet you in the comment section to discuss those things uh, and go have a bit of back and forth on what might be the best way to do this whole test and compare thing. Is it overblown? Let me know also if you intend on using it at all or if you think it's a waste of time or you think that your thumbnail that you pick and prefer is gonna be the best one each and every time. So why bother with test and compare? I wanna know your thoughts. Now, a couple of videos ago, we talked about the community posts having a sneaky update in regards to eligibility. If you wanna know more about that, you can check it out right here. Well, this is Doug, and I'll catch you later.